Greetings! Uh, today is March the 5th of 2023. I haven't posted a um, Toyaholic video in a while. Um, the past several months have been extremely busy both professionally and personally. Uh, so I just haven't had a big chance to do stuff. I have been tinkering a little bit on stuff. Um, I'm going to start you off. I uh, made this guy a long time ago. This is a Mongo Beefhead Tribesman. Now if you don't know what this is, this is from a proposal that Kenner made in about 85. They did not want to stop making Star Wars toys because it made them a lot of money. So when the movies ended in 83, they pitched uh, that they would extend the line and come up with their own characters. And so they kitbashed several figures together. Uh, and this is one of the ones that they did, not this particular one. It's a recreation. Uh, but they just used existing parts. Uh, and so... What you see here very clearly is Squid Head uh, from, the, from the front there, and they rotated his head upwards, so that Squid Head's body, legs, head, Hammerhead's arms, and 4LOM's little harness there. And I just noticed this earlier, but I must have had a, a bad day with the spray paint when I tried to do the sealant on him, because the back is very matte, and the front is very glossy. So, uh, made this guy within weeks of the Steve Sansweet magazine article coming out that showed the Mongo Beefhead Tribesman and a few other things from this 1985 uh, pitch. And that magazine came out in 1995. More on that later. A couple of years ago, I made one more from that line, which was Imperial Attack Droid... Is this one B? I think this is B. So... And it's mainly Zuckus, uh, what kids today would call 4LOM, because 4LOM should be the robot, right? Yeah. And Zuckus should be the alien. But in the 80s, they called them Swip Swap. So Zuckus was the robot, 4LOM was alien. Do you know what 4LOM stands for? Kenner got to name that character themselves. So, you know, like C3PO, R2D2. They came up with this robotic name and they called it 4LOM <laughs> for the love of money. Yeah, literally. Like when I say Kenner wanted to extend the line because it was making them a lot of money, they knew, <laughs> even when they named that character, it was like, this is for the love of the money that the Star Wars toys are giving us. So a uh, little bit of uh, two 1B parts here, and then the the rifle from, actually, 4LM. So Zuckus's body, 4LM's rifle, two 1B's uh, mask, shoulders, and claws. Uh, so I made this one, I don't know, five years ago at the most. The most recent one that I've done, and I didn't think I would ever be able to, is Imperial Attack Droid A. Now this is IG-88's torso, another set of 2-1B arms, a set of 2-1B legs. The guns are IG-88's guns, and I actually used uh, repro guns because uh, I just didn't want to mess up a, a pair of guns. And the head is the top cannon from the Y-Wing fighter. That was a stopping point for me for many years because I didn't want to damage. I've got multiple Y-Wing fighters. I, I got one of them for free in your lifetime. Uh, Wes gave me a whole box of Star Wars stuff when he was moving from one house to the other. So I got a Y-Wing fighter completely free from a friend of mine from college. But I never wanted to take the top cannon off of one of them to give to this custom. And so in the back of my brain for a long time, it was like, well, there's no point making that custom. But I was at, uh, um, what's that? Renaissance Antiques that's uh, right up the street there. Yeah. They had an IG-88 in the beater bin who was missing his head and missing one arm. And I saw it and I thought, who's going to buy that? And a couple weeks later I thought about this guy and I thought, I bet you I could get that Canon 3D printed. Sure enough, there was somebody on eBay selling 3D printed Y-Wing top cannons. So I bought one of those. Bought the guns. I had uh, two one B legs left over from making this guy all those years ago, uh, but I needed two one B arms. And sure enough, I'm the moron that had to go back and buy a headless, one armed IG eighty eight figure just for his torso uh, for this custom here. Uh, there's a couple of details still left to be painted on him, but basically this is exactly the way that the uh, the figure appeared. So there are a couple more things that I need to do. Zach, entertain the viewers. I'm going to make uh, the all-terrain ion cannon, which is the 
Death Star's gun off the top floor on the back of a convertible AT-AT. So I've been gathering parts for that. A couple years ago, I bought this side door to the AT-AT that somebody burned a hole through, and I got it really cheap. Then I found this part on eBay and this part on eBay and got them. Then, lo and behold, because it was still in my saved searches, another set popped up for about half the price. So I said, what the heck? So I've got the top of an AT-AT. I've got the one panel that actually that burn hole is in the wrong location for, and I will have to come up with some sort of creative solution using the parts I've already paid for. But when I went to compare the parts to the one photo that I've got of the prototype, it really didn't seem to match. It almost doesn't look like they even used that side panel for the ATIC or the attic. And I don't guess that one works. Like, you can call it an ad ad an ad ad or you can call it an AT, AT, or you can call it a walker, but I don't guess you can call an ATIC or an all-terrain ion cannon an attic. So I said, I need to find some better copies of these photos than the ones that have been floating around online for a while, right? So, on the SWCA.com, I still like to call it Toys R Guys, there was a reference about some of these prototype figures, and it said the first place that many of them were seen by the public was in this Steve Sansweet article about unproduced Kenner prototypes that had appeared in Star Wars Galaxy Collector number two. I couldn't find mine. I said, well, it's not going to be that expensive. I'm just go on eBay and buy another one. So I go on eBay, and I bought an issue of Star Wars Galaxy Collector number two. And there is an article in here by Steve Sansweet about unproduced Kenner toys. But that's not the article that I was looking for. As it turns out, for a couple of decades now, on the SWCA.com, that article has a typo. It was not Star Wars Galaxy Collector Magazine. It was just Star Wars Galaxy magazine from about three years earlier. I need issue two of Star Wars Galaxy magazine. I did not need issue number two of Star Wars Galaxy collector magazine. And I, this arrived in the mail and I was feeling kind of bummed out. And I just flipped through and I'm like, maybe there's another article in here that, no, no. What the heck? And I literally did, you know, cartoon double take. I was like, <laughs> because... Through the decades, I had forgotten that this issue, with that on the cover, is the issue where Gus Lopez dropped a magazine in the floor. Thank you. Upside down. Where Gus Lopez had written an article about me. He, he wrote a collector spotlight on me. That's me before I ever had kids. All right, that's like 1998. May of 98 was when this came out. Your brother wasn't born until December of 98. So that's me, uh, at, actually at my mom's house, uh, standing in front of uh, my bedroom closet door had uh, a, a Han Solo standee uh, standing on it. And I dressed in a black turtleneck and a white sweatshirt and a pair of gloves and a Don Post uh, helmet. And then here are a, a bunch of of my customs at the time. I don't see Mongo Beefhead in this group shot. I, if he's there, I do not spot him. But, uh, you know, little things like the the uh, black Death Star droid with the silver eyes, or the K-3PO, or the U-3PO, or the R-3PO. You know, there's a lot of stuff here that, um, that I was doing in 98 that people have now made businesses out of making customs. And also one of my cartoons from yet another publication with a confusing name. My friend Martin Thurn in the 90s was doing a fanzine called Star Wars Collector. Yes, there was a Star Wars Collector, a Star Wars Galaxy, and there was a Star Wars Galaxy Collector. Which is probably why nobody's caught that typo for so many years. I'm sorry about the camera shaking, the dog hit the tripod. So, here, get in the shot, you little... She's, she's a ham. Okay, get out of the shot. She kissed me like four times. Oh, now she's getting up there with you. So, 
the weird thing is, as I was showing this magazine to Zach the day that it arrived, it caught my eye that Gus actually mentioned a specific cartoon of mine, The Lone Ranger and Ronto. And the really weird thing is, earlier that same day, Martin Thurn had shared on Facebook one PDF of one issue of Star Wars Collector from 1997. And the one that he shared, please let me have this on here. It's got to be on my phone somewhere. The one issue that he shared was the one with the Lone Ranger and Ronto photo in it. I'm not seeing it. It's got to be here on my phone somewhere. So Maybe it's in download. Screenshots? Where did I get it from? Hey, Google. Show screenshots. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, that ring light's going to mess it up. The Lone Ranger and Ronto. 97, the Star Wars Special Edition had just come out with the Ronto creature in it. And so I drew this little cartoon. And of all the ones that I did over all the years that I wrote for Star Wars Collector fanzine, that was the one that Gus mentioned. And the same doggone day that this magazine arrived in the mail, a magazine that I bought in error because of a typo, I'm like, Lone Ranger and Ronto, I just saw that. So... By the way, it's been a weird week for packages in the mail because I bought a Tuscan Raider and this is the box that arrived in the mail. Now, I'd say that's overkill for a Tuscan Raider, right? So I go to open it and first thing I see is like some silver feet wrapped in bubble wrap. And I'm like, this is not the right package. They've sent me the wrong thing. So, in the bubble wrap was this guy. Now, I don't have a clue what he's from. He's pretty neat looking. But I took a photo of it and I sent it to the seller. And I said, I think you must have mislabeled a couple of packages because this is what I got. And he said, oh, can you send it back? And then I fell asleep and uh, I woke up later and there were more messages from the seller. And the seller was saying, uh, actually, can you send that directly to the other buyer? Because he needs it by Thursday for a birthday party. So tonight's Sunday. I couldn't go to the post office today. Uh, I've got uh, a, an appointment tomorrow to get to. So very early tomorrow, I am going to go on Monday to the post office and mail this directly to the correct buyer. And then the seller's going to reimburse me for uh, the priority shipping and everything. And then hopefully, the Tuscan that I need for a custom is going to arrive shortly thereafter. I don't know if the other buyer is sending that directly to me or if he's sending it to them or what's going to happen there. But anyway, so that's my good deed for the week is uh, somebody's looking for this guy. I don't have a clue what that is. I have no idea what toy line this is. It's, uh, it's made by Ideal and it did come out in 77 according to the info on the back. So probably one of those, hey, let's capitalize on the success of that Star Wars movie kind of toys. So anyway, that's my latest Toyaholic update. Thank you so much for watching.